available now at any of our authorized retailers. And for more information, you can always visit our website at www.roller.rydellskates.com. Come celebrate summer with the Dairyland Dolls, Saturday, June 20th, and Saturday, July 11th at the Hartmeyer Ice Arena. Doors at 5, action at 6. But wait, there's more. The Dairyland Dolls will be shaking things up with a special outdoor exhibition bout on Saturday, June 27th during the Festival Food Shake the Lake celebration at the Monona Terrace. Event opens at 5, Derby at 6. Come for Derby, stay for fireworks. Find the Derby in you. MadRollingDolls.com Skates is proud to support the 2015 Midwest Brew Haha. We are a derby owned roller skate shop in Buffalo, New York. Our focus is providing our customers with innovative and quality skates, parts, and protective gear from all the top manufacturers. Our customers represent a variety of skating styles and backgrounds. Our boutique shopping experience focuses on finding the right skates and gear for you. We also add a bit of style with our fun accessories and clothing. Visit us in Buffalo or online at turnaroundskates.com. All right, looks like we're ready to go here. Uh, my name's Kate Silver. I'm Star Spangled Hammer, and we'll be here with you for the Battle Stars versus Fort Wayne here on track two, day one of Brouhaha 2015. And we're getting started here. Quick announcement. Uh, just lineups for the Battle Stars. We have Tenac number 10, Tenacious D, number 100. Bassford, 1117, Veruca Salt, number 1427, Luberg, number 1804, Smackajawea, number 215, Shack, number 28, Mother Trucker, 32, Schoolhouse Rock, 321, Kimber, number 4, Panzer Wench, 55, Merkill, 69, Demand a Beating, 84, Scully Wheeler, 8990, Frankie Fatal, 934, Carmen Ajekcha, and DSM5, Psychological. And for the Fort Wayne Derby Girls, we have 003 Buttercup, 007 Shaken Not Stirred, 119 Kelly Adkins, 16 Oreo Slammer, 17 Benton, 1818 Brontosaurus, 2 Amanda Willis, 314 Pierce, 35 Mindy De Butcher Knife, 6 Geisha, 721 La Hapa, 9 Feline Frenzy, B52 Dodger Elbows. It looks like we're getting ready to go here. Skaters are taking the line. And on the line for Fort Wayne, we have number 119, Kelly Atkins, going against number 85. For
Okay, so it looks like that's actually, looks like 85 is actually 84 on our roster. Scully Wheeler. Okay. So it's going to be Cully Wheel Kelly, yeah, Scully Wheeler. <laughs> I'll get that right. Versus Kelly, Kelly Adkins. So if, just, go ahead. if you're just joining us, the Battle Stars in black, Fort Wayne in white. The Battle Stars, the B squad for the Bruce City Bruisers. And this is the SWAT team for Fort Wayne. This is their B team. So some B team action here at Bruce Bruhaha 2015. And the five second signals coming from Jam Tyra. We're ready to get this show on the road. And Kelly Atkins takes lead jam for Fort Wayne, making her way out as Kelly, Kelly Wheeler gets stuck in the back, makes her way back. Kelly Atkins making her way to the Battle Stars pack, pushes her way past all four jammers, which will make that a five point Rydell Skate Grand Slam for Fort Wayne. Scully Wheeler, though, gets out, finishes her initial pass, but Kelly Atkins makes it through the pack for another four points for Fort Wayne. That'll bring the score to 9-0, Fort Wayne. Nice jam there by Kelly Atkins for the Fort Wayne Derby Girls. Kelly Atkins also does some jamming duties for the A-team for Fort Wayne. Pulling some double duty there over in Fort Wayne for their team. On the line now, four Battle Stars. Number, number, let's see, that is. It's number 32, two Schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Rock. Rock. Okay. Number, yeah, <laughs> funny. Number 17 for, the, for Fort Wayne, uh, Benton. Schoolhouse Rock now moving, gets Lee Jam status. But Denton is not, Benton is not far behind her. Both teams rolling, having a slow roll. And the jam is called. Looks like Benton was able to chase her. Make Schoolhouse Rock call it off. So the score stands at Fort Wayne 9 Battle Stars. Zero. Next up on the line, that's 55 Merkill for Bruce City. And for Fort Wayne, that is. It's like number Eli nine. Frenzy. Yep. Merkill trying the inside and does it. Gets lead jammer for Battle Stars. Meanwhile, Feline Frenzy working her way around the outside, gets, takes a big tumble, goes to the back, Merkill makes her way through, goes to the outside, big hit from Kelly Atkins, and she calls it. Gets four points for the Battle Stars, putting them on the board, two, two no score for Fort Wayne. That's going to be number 85, Scully Wheeler, out there again for Bruce City. And for Fort Wayne, that's 852. Or B52, sorry, Dodger Elbows. Scully Wheeler coming in. Takes to the outside, gets a little push from one of her blockers. On the inside, Dodger Elbows, though, takes lead jam, just sneaks right through. Scully Wheeler still trying to make her way through the pack. One to beat and makes her way through for her initial pass. Dodger elbows. Makes her way through. Two to beat in the front. Two wall of battle stars. Bumps up against last blocker out of play. And gets through for four points. Looks like they were trading fours there. So this looks like it is 4-4 four, four for both teams, bringing the score up to eight battle stars and 
13, Fort Wayne. Next up on the line for Bruce City, that is number 32, Schoolhouse Rock. And for Fort Wayne, that's 003, Buttercup. Looks like they went for a pivot line start. And we're going to have ourselves a power jam here as Buttercup get called for the back block. So she's going to skate on off to the penalty box. So now a power jam situation, a Sakatumi power jam for Brew City. Schoolhouse Rock tries to push through the front, gets knocked to the outside, comes back in. No pass, no penalty. She makes her way through, comes up on that three wall of Fort Wayne blockers, tries to find some room. One more to beat, gets past it, and that'll be a five point Rydell Skates grand slam for the Battle Stars. Looks like Buttercup is back in the action, trying to work her way through. And she gets to the pack now on her initial pa scoring pass. Schoolhouse Rock slow getting up, gets a big hit from number 16, Oreo Slammer. She has to come back in on the back of the pack. Buttercup makes her way through, one more to beat in the front as, Battle as uh, Schoolhouse Rock. She's trying to find her way to out of the pack. Gets a little bump from number 721 on Fort Wayne La Hapa, but is able to get through the point for another four points for the Battle Stars. Buttercup comes through on the outside, finds some room, comes through, managed to stay in bounds, scoring another four points for Fort Wayne. And the jam comes to its natural conclusion. So, trading fours on that. Nobody really pulling ahead. Battle Stars at 18 to Fort Wayne's 22. Teams are pretty evenly matched here. Not a lot of folks pulling ahead. Just trading fours, lead going about a little evenly matched. That's right, next up on the line for the Bruce City Battle Stars, it's number 10, Tenacious D. And for Fort Wayne, that's number 17, Benton. Peck slowly moving through turns one and two, now starting to spread out a bit as Tenacious D tries to work the front of the pack. Denton, though, taking the inside, gets lead jam, pulls ahead. Tenacious D, one to beat, seven to number 721, La Hapa. and gets called on an elbow penalty, penalty, which will make this a socket to me power jam for Fort Wayne. I'll tell you what, I can't remember the last time I saw an elbow call. Usually it's all forearms you're seeing these days, but the yep. elbow call there. The elbow's making a comeback, let me tell you. <laughs> I think especially with the new for, uh, forearm rules, yeah, I think folks like are... You know, they want to be a little more cautious, so they end up elbowing folks. Elbows making a comeback. Next thing you know, they'll be wearing bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll see belts next screw. Ha ha. <laughs> jam finishes up uh, with a power jam start for the Fort Wayne SWAT team. Their lead is being increased to 27. Battlestar is staying at 18. And that's going to be Feline Frenzy out there unopposed to start this jam off. And the Bruce City Battle Stars have a four on three pack advantage as number six, that's Geisha, sits in the penalty box for Fort Wayne. Feline Frenzy trying to find some space. Some of her blockers helping her out in the front. One more to beat. Oh, looks like she's getting some help in the front. And it looks like Feline Friend is knocked back and forced to recycle. Tenacious D back in the pack after being released from the box. Trying to find a way, a big hit 
against number 003 for Fort Wayne Buttercup. So she starts making her way on her initial scoring pass. Tenacious D now looking for some points. Getting caught up in the Battlestar pack and she calls it off. Earning her three points, but not before. Oh, I think I got this backwards. She's able to score two, um, but not before Tenacious D is able to score three points. So 21 Battle Stars in to 29 Fort Wayne. So next up on the jammer line for the Bruce City Battle Stars, that's Demanda Beating, number 69. And she's going up against B-52, Dodger Elbows for Fort Wayne. The man of beating makes it out first for Lee Jammer for the Battle Stars. Not far behind her is Dodger Elbows. The pack rolling around at a steady speed. Both Jammers skating hard and fast to get to the pack. The man of beating getting a few points before she calls it off, but so does Jammer for Fort Wayne. So, see um, two points start for the belt, scored for the Battle Stars, but three points scored for Fort Wayne. So, call it off, but not fast enough. It's actually been something we've seen a lot this game so far, as we've seen a lot of non-Jammer, non-lead Jammer points so far here, and we're only 10 minutes in, so it'll be interesting to see if that trend continues throughout this game. That's right, that takes a lot of awareness to know when you should call it off, um, when to do it early enough so that your opponent doesn't score points. Right now, we have Kelly Adkins for the SWAT team, wearing the star and having Lee Jammer status, makes her way for a four point scoring pass, looking to her bench to call it off and she does leaving um, Merkill scoreless for the Battle Stars. So that'll put the score at 23-36 score at Fort Wayne. Now we have number 17 Benton for the SWAT team jamming against number 85 Scully Wheeler for the Battle Stars. Scully Wheeler pushing at the front of the pack. Fort Wayne starting near the near the pivot line and Scully gets through for Lee Jammer status. Benton makes her way through trying to find some space against a three wall in the front gets her way through as Scully makes her way around for her first scoring pass. Working her way, trying to get that last point in the front. She does. And she calls it after getting four points for the Battle Stars. So that'll make the score 27 to 36. So the last two jams looks like some textbook hit it and quit it. The folks being very protective of points, not taking any risks there. Well, you know what, these B-team games, it's really for these two squads to work on their upcoming talent. They're Absolutely. coming up through the ranks. And you want to teach fundamentals. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of just quick four-point call-off jams and a lot of really strong fundamentals is what you're going to see in a bout like this. Absolutely, Hammer. Now jamming for the battle stars. We have Schoolhouse Rock, who takes a lead jam. Stuck in the back of the pack for Fort Wayne, we have... D-line frenzy, but she squeaks through on the inside line. I don't, know if, oh, I don't know if you can really tell from uh, the stream at home, but these two jammers are absolutely tiny. They are, <laughs> they are very much oriented to squeak through these walls. Battlestar is scoring four points on that on that jam. Shutting out the Fort Fort Wayne SWAT team. So I'll bring the score up to 31-36. So these teams trading fours in BCB just making their way back up, trying to even this game out. Yep, really tight game here, and it's a uh, 32 out there right now. Schoolhouse Rock 
Going up against B-52 Dodger elbows. I think that's that's Kimber who's jamming number 321 for oh, Ballastar. I, I missed the one. You're right. Good catch. Good catch. There's a lot. There's These numbers are so similar. <laughs> Many of them. It's a close race between the two jammers. B-52 right behind her, and Kimber calls it up before risking losing any points. A 0-0 on both of these teams. So the score will stay where it is. So, so far, Bruce City has employed six jammers in their rotation, while Fort Wayne has put five different jammers out there so far. Lots of people getting track time here, just trying out the star, seeing how it feels. Right now, Kelly Atkins is wearing a star for the SWAT team. And Mother Trucker, a new jammer, speak of the devil, <laughs> is jamming for the Battle Stars. Kelly Atkins gets out first, gaining lead jammer. But Mother Trucker gets out too, about half a track behind her. This Battle Stars are keeping this pack super fast. Kelly Atkins trying to catch up. She does, gets through. Looks like she gets all her points. And she does, she gets four points, leaving the Battle Stars with zero. So that puts the score at 31-40, Fort Wayne. And it looks like a timeout has been called by Fort Wayne to give us a chance to mention some of our great sponsors. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Play, stay, and get lucky at Milwaukee's number one entertainment destination. Table games, dining, shows, hotel. It's all here, only at Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Interested in getting caught up on the stats of your favorite teams here at Brouhaha 2015? Well, guess what? We got it all for you at stats.madrollandolls.com. You can get those stats as soon as 15 minutes after your team's game ends. 15 minutes? That's right. Shut stats, the front door. That's right. Stats at MadRollandDolls. Oh, sorry, stats.MadRollandDolls.com. And if you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, I don't even know if Snapchat supporters hashtags, but if you are on <laughs> any of those things, use the hashtag Brouhaha2015 and share your photos. If you're watching in the audience, you know, if you have your laptop in MySpace, the audience, MySpace, Com CompuServe, Com AOL. You know, if you're using a BBS, <laughs> you can just, just go to town with that hashtag. Post pictures of your watch parties, the nachos you're eating, your cats, especially your cats. Mm, nachos. Nachos. Speaking of nachos, on the jam line <laughs> for the Battle Stars, we have Schoolhouse Rock. Going up against Benton for the SWAT team. Wait a minute, and what does that have to do with nachos? It has everything to do with nachos, okay. Hammer. Okay, I'll roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> Dammers are neck and neck, Schoolhouse Rock. Lee Jam, but Benton gets ahead of her and Schoolhouse Rock calls it off, makes sure that she doesn't get any points. So we got no points scored by either of these Jammers on that jam. So next up, it's going to be number nine, Feline Frenzy out there for Fort Wayne, going up against number 10, Tenacious D for Brew City. A four on three pack advantage right now in favor of Brew City. As number 181A, Bronte Soros, sits in the penalty box. Number 119, Kelly Atkins trying to force. Tenacious D out, but Tenacious E is able to gain lead jam or status. Beeline Frenzy still working your way through her initial pass. Tenacious D trying to find some space through this pack, this moving steady. Find some space on the inside. Is able to go, but then gets called on a track cut penalty. So she will, she'll be spending some time in the Potawatomi Hotel and Casino penalty box. She's yeah. also lead jammer, so that will make this a two-minute jam. Much to her dismay, there is no gambling 
in that penalty box. There are absolutely no gambling, only serious penalty times. Feline Frenzy now trying to still work her way through her initial pass through this pack. Getting no pack call. Pushes her way through. Out of play calls being called left and right on the Battle Stars for not reforming. Got a little bit of a lack of awareness, which is what you see sometimes in these B team games. Yeah, just need to make sure you're paying attention when the refs call no pack or out of play. Make sure you're paying attention. Yep, you have to either let the person go or make sure you reform as fast as possible. Tenacious D out of the box and is able to score a Rydell Skates Grand Slam. And the two minutes has completed. Looks like Fort Wayne was able to eke out three more points by the end of that jam, which will bring their lead up to 52 to the Battle Stars 36. 11 minutes remaining in this half. So it's gonna be Scully Wheeler out there on the line for the Battle Stars this jam, and she'll be going up against Dodger Elbows for Fort Wayne. And it looks like Scully Wheeler starting in the box. Yep. Dodger Elbows gets out first for lead jammer status. Tries to get some help there from Wills. And a little bit, one to beat in the front. No pass, no penalties. Able to pass that one blocker. One to beat in the front. No pack, makes it through for a Rydell Skates Grand Slam. Scully Wheeler, though, is back in the action. Tries to find some space to complete her initial pass. But Dodger, Dodger Bowes is able to get, Dodger Elbows is able to get on the outside, scoring another four, four points for Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne here starting to pour it on a little bit here as the first half starts to get into the final 10 minutes. Well, it looks like Scully Wheeler wasn't actually the jammer for that. Um, that was Tenacious D again. She started in the box from the last jam, so her stats weren't, weren't showing the right thing, so no worries, caught that. That brings the score 62 to Fort Wayne to 36 Battle Stars. On the line now. For the Battle Stars is number 119, Kelly Atkins, but she will be heading to the box for a penalty. And number 6-9, the Amanda Beating is skating for the Battle Stars with the, and calls it early. It looks like there was an injury on the track. That is Geisha over in the back straightaway. It looks like they're looking at her right ankle, lower leg area. Luckily we have Medics on staff for all three days of this tournament.
on track one. Oh, and we have Geisha making her way off the track with a little assistance, standing on one, one skate, but looks like she is making it off, which is always a good, good sign. So hopefully that turn doesn't turn out to be anything too serious. This is a hard contact sport, folks. Action on track one at Brouhaha. We have Texas in the lead with 173, going against Puget Sound at 93. It looks like the jam is back. Game is back on. Jammers and blockers are taking the track. Jam start whistle is blown. Number 55, Merkill jamming for the Battle Stars. Starting on a socket to me power jam as Kelly Adkins for Fort Wayne is in the box. But then Merkill gets called on a forearm penalty, which means she'll be spending some time in the box. Kelly Adkins is released and hits the pack, trying to find some space. Finds a little bit of space on the inside, cuts it and gets a lead jammer status for Fort Wayne. Kelly Atkins now working her way on the inside, takes a dip, calls it off. Scores a five point Rydell skate power, or a grand slam for Fort Wayne, excuse me. Bringing their lead up to 67. To the Battle Stars 36. Merkill still sitting in the box, giving a, a power jam to uh, number 17, Benton. Both teams at full strength defensively, both with four blockers on the track. Benton looking for some space, looking to go in. Merkill released from the penalty box, hits the pack. Benton tries to spin on the outside, doesn't, falls out, but Merkill gets the lead jammer status and rushes around the track. Benton still trying to find some space to get through, tries the outside, Merkill hits the pack, takes a little shirt whip off one of her teammates, try to get some speed. Two more to be in the front. But Benton makes her way through, starting her first sorting pass, but Merkill calls it off after gaining a five point right out skate. Grand slam for Fort Wayne. For those of you or, watching at home on ESPN 8, the Ocho, that is <laughs> El Grande Slamo. Or rather, five points for the Battle Stars, but yes, ESPN 8 is uh, it's where they show competitive underwater ba basket weaving as well. That's on at midnight tonight, I believe. I, I can't wait till I get back to my hotel to watch that. Jamming now for the SWAT team, Buttercup. Gets a lead jam. Stuck in the back is Schoolhouse Rock, but she's making her way up. Looks like Frankie Fatale is making her way to the penalty box, as well as Oreo slam her. Buttercup trying to find some space, gets recycled to the back, works away, but not before number 32, Schoolhouse Rock can score four points. Buttercup answers it for, for of her own, but it's a trade there. So with just over five minutes to go here in the first half, the score 71 Fort Wayne, 45 Bruce City. 
If you're just joining us, it's the Battle of the B Team Squads. It's the Brew City Battle Stars versus the Fort Wayne Derby Girls SWAT Team. Taking the line now for the Battle Stars, we have Kimber going against number nine, Feline Frenzy for the Fort Wayne SWAT Team. Fort Wayne in white, Brew City in black. Kimber gets out. Gets out first for Lee Jammer. Makes her way around, but Feline Frenzy gets out as well. About half a track behind her. These skaters are keeping the track, keeping the pack fast, making sure that these jammers are gonna have to work a little harder to catch up with them. Kimber gets through and gets all points though, shutting Fort Wayne down, bringing the score up to 49. This is Fort Wayne 71. So that's a little bit of strategy it looks like both these teams are using making sure they're keeping that pack fast so those jammers have to skate a lot to get around to them but it gives the jammer who may is not in lead a little more time to catch up to the jammer who is just to overtake and forcing her to call it off mm -hmm. skating now for SWAT team is Kelly Atkins and she takes the lead jam not far behind her number 85 Scully Wheeler pack again has a little speed to it Kelly Atkins takes the inside calls it off it's a quick two points leaving the battle stars with zero so that'll bring the score up to 49 to Fort Wayne 73 Three minutes left in this period. Taking the line for the SWAT team, number 17, Benton, and for the Battle Stars, number 32, Schoolhouse Rock. Kind of the battle of the opposites. Benton, taller skater, Schoolhouse Rock, a smaller skater. Looks like that is runs to her advantage as she squeaks through the wall and gains lead jammer status. But Benton, not far behind her. Currently a four on three pack advantage in favor of Fort Wayne, but that's about to come to an end as number 28, Mother Truck, Mother Tucker, re-enters play as that jam comes to an end. Three points there for Bruce City as that jam comes to an end. Bruce City chipping away at the 21 point lead of Fort Wayne. On the jammer line now for Fort Wayne, that's gonna be 003 Buttercup. And for Bruce City, that's 321 Kim Burr. Both jammers trying to find some room on the inside. Looks like Kim Burr playing a little jammer on jammer, forcing Buttercup back. Kim Burr forces her way through the center, gets lead jammer status. Buttercup now trying to make her way, follows in her footsteps, also makes it through the pack. Both jammers making their way around to turns one and two. Pack speeding up. Kimber makes it through, passes. Many in, if not all in, yes, all Fort Wayne blocker, Fort Wayne blockers getting four points and leaving Fort Wayne with zip. So they'll bring the score to 56 to Fort Wayne 73. And if you're curious, over on track one, we now have a final. The Texas All-Stars take down Puget Sound, 186 to 98. That is your final over on track one. On the line now for Fort Wayne, we have Feline Frenzy. And for the Battle Stars, we have Scully Wheeler. Scully Wheeler gets pushed out, comes in in the back. Feline Frenzy now working her way Pushing against a front wall of Battle Stars. But looks like Scully Wheeler is trying to find her way, getting stuck beyond one more blocker. That's number B52, Dodger Elbows, doing some great one on one positional blocking. Scully Wheeler, though, forced back into the pack, finds her way around. Against, again, Dodger Elbows trying to positionally blocker, but it's out of play, gets, gets lead jam. 
beeline frenzy still making her way through trying to find some space on the outside gets knocked to the out oreo oreo slammer knocking scully wheeler out forcing her to enter in the back another hit by oreo slammer Scully Wheeler, one to beat in the front, and makes it past her. Scores a five-point Rydell Skates Grand Slam for the Battle Stars. Now Feline Frenzy on her first scoring pass. And Scully Wheeler looking to hit the pack, maybe to score a few points before she calls it. She does call it, gains two points, but not before Fort Wayne scores four of, the own, four of their own. So it looks like they weren't able to call it quick enough, and that'll be the half. So at the half, the score is 63 Battle Stars and 77 Fort Wayne. So we'll have about a 10 minute halftime, and we'll be right back here for the second half of this game between Fort Wayne and Brew City.
You're close enough I can echo you now. You're close enough that I can echo you now. All right, looks like we're back with the with the Brew City Bruisers Battle Stars going against the Fort Wayne SWAT team. Score at the half, Battle Stars 63 and Fort Wayne 77. Let's look at some of the high scores for the first half. For the Battle Stars, Schoolhouse Rock coming in with the highest scorer at 21 points, followed by Scully Wheeler, Wheeler at 15. Merkill at nine and Tenacious D at eight. And for the Fort Wayne SWAT team, Kelly Atkins with 24 points, Feline Frenzy with 18, Dodger Elbows at 17, and Buttercup at 13. Doesn't look like anybody is in terrible penalty trouble. For the Battle Stars, Tenacious D, and Mother Trucker with three penalties. And for the SWAT team, Buttercup and Oreo Slammer with four. No one in impending penalty danger. We will need to keep an eye on Buttercup and Oreo Slammer though coming into the second half with four penalties apiece. They're gonna have to really clean their game up here if they wanna finish out this game. Absolutely. On the line, we have Scully Wheeler for the Battle Stars going against Kelly Atkins for the SWAT team. Kelly Atkins. Makes her way on the inside line. Gets lead jammer for the SWAT team. Scully Wheeler trying to make her way. Gets knocked down. Gets back up. Tries to find some room against a number of spread out Fort Wayne blockers. Kelly Atkins comes on the outside. Does a little duck move. Is able to get through. Gains a five point Rydell skate power jam. Give you an update on Geisha, the Fort Wayne skater that went down there towards the end of the second half. She is still over on the table by the EMTs. Looks like an issue with her right lower leg. So she is unlikely to return to this game. That's unfortunate to hear. Hoping that ends up being something that um, has a quick recovery time. Lots of injuries can put out skaters for weeks, possibly months, and that's no fun. Fort Wayne was able to score eight points on that last jam, bringing their total up to 85. Jamming now for the SWAT team, 17, number 17, Benton, who gets lead jam. Jamming for the Battle Stars, the man to beating, cuts in on the inside and is able to complete her initial pass. Big spread out pack and hitting that initial line of Battlestar Sabres gets through. Looks like she got all four points and Fort Wayne gets none. So that brings the total up to 60, or, oh, excuse me, 63 Battlestars, 89 Fort Wayne. So next up on the chamber line for the Fort Wayne SWAT team, it's gonna be number nine, Feline Frenzy. And for the Battle Stars, it's going to be number seven, Kimber. If you're in the venue, you, you kind of hear the um, the beer leaders. That those are the <laughs> cheerleaders for Bruce City. Um, a cheer involving uh, the long R in Kimber's name, and Kimber. And Kimber gets lead jam, fall about half a track behind by Feline Frenzy. Kimber calls jam. Oh, it looks like the jam is called due to a down skater. Yeah, Am Amber Wills went down real hard on her rear end. I think she may have actually landed on a skate. Ah, that is not the funnest thing. Does get off under her own power and skates off the tracks. So we'll have to 
hope that she returns to play here soon. Always a good sign when the skater returns to the track and she takes a seat on her own bench, so hopefully nothing too serious. She won't be back for at least three jams as to uh, rules dictating injury and skater uh, play. So now it's gonna be Mother Tucker out there jamming for the Battle Stars, going up against Dodger Elbows for the SWAT team. Both of these teams, nobody sitting in the Potawatomi Casino and Hotel penalty box. Oh, actually there <laughs> is one sitting in the box as soon as I said it. Yeah. That's the announcer's curse apparently. That thing I have heard about Oh, For so long, I yes. said it and it happened. Yeah, it's funny how that works. That uh, is weird. Unfortunately, it only works when we're sitting at this table. So <laughs> like if I say, oh, and now it's time for Hammer to get a million dollars. And fortunately, Hammer doesn't get a million dollars. I wonder if you can go to the penalty box even if you're not in the game. Maybe oh. Hammer will go to the box just out of sheer chance. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, thought we were going here, but instead we're going to have ourselves a quick official timeout. Okay. Well, this timeout brought to you by Orthopedic Institute of Wisconsin, Derek, Dr. Eric Pifel of the Orthopedic Institute of Wisconsin, and MOSH wishes you a safe brouhaha weekend. We're, we are here for all your injuries on and off the track. Contact us at theorthoinstitute.com. And it looks like the jam is on now. Still working through number 1427, Luber getting called on a penalty, making her way around. Mother Tucker taking lead jam for the Battle Stars, but Dodger elbows not far behind her. Mother Tucker gets a few points, calls it off. Gets, it looks like two points on that jam. Bringing the score up to 68 for the Battle Stars, 89 Fort Wayne. So next up on the jam line is gonna be Schoolhouse Rock for the Battle Stars and it's gonna be Kelly Adkins for the SWAT team. And the SWAT team is going to enjoy a three-on-two pack advantage as each team has blockers in the penalty box at this moment. Schoolhouse Rock, quick hop to the inside, gets lead jam, but Kelly Atkins and not far behind her. Pack speeding up, keeping pace. Schoolhouse Rock taking advantage of the uh, pack, trying to get ahead. Uh, with the uh, blockers on the Battle Stars down and is able to gain a few points before calling it off. So that will, looks like Battle Stars score two, but Fort Wayne was able to gain three. So she risked it and it did not pay off in the end. Now on the line is Kimber for the Battle Stars. And it looks like a new jammer. Mm -hmm. Oreo Slammer jamming for Fort Wayne. Kimber working her way at the front, trying to find some room, does, gets on the in on the inside, but it looks like Oreo Slammer is getting called on a track cut, making this a socket to me power jam for the Battle Stars. So the jammer gamble not paying off for the SWAT team. That's always the danger when you have less experienced jammers coming in. They are not as cognizant of, of not bettering the position. Um, cutting is more of a big deal. And Kimber gets around for another Rydell Skates Grand Slam. Comes around, makes a Quick few points again, gets another grand slam for the Battle Stars. So Battle Stars seeing a comeback here with that power jam. Really able to capitalize. 
Oreo Slammer coming back from the box, completes her initial pass. Yeah, what was just 10 minutes ago, a sizable lead now down to only seven points. Absolutely. Kimber gets knocked down, calls it off before Oreo Slammer can hit the pack, bringing the Battlestar score up to 87 compared to Fort Wayne's 92, making this a five point game. So really quick turn of events there, momentum on the Battlestar's side. Well, clearly the Battlestars came out of the second of the halftime with some adjustments, and now we'll have to see if Fort Wayne can make uh, counter adjustments to stop this uh, hemorrhaging of points right now. Absolutely. So on the line for Fort Wayne, feline frenzy, and on the line, and wearing the Jammer Star for the Battlestars, Scully Wheeler, number 85. Scully Wheeler looking for some space on the outside. Is able to get out of the pack, gets lead jam for the Battle Stars. Feline Frenzy gets pushed out. Trying to find some room, getting blocked in the front by that looks like Frankie Fatale. No, excuse me, that was Bluebird. And the Battle Stars are able to put four more on the on the board. So it's a one point game now. So on the jammer line for the Battle Stars, Schoolhouse Rock going up against Buttercup. Back block call on Oreo Slammer. Buttercup pushing at the front. Gets lead jam for the SWAT team. Well, now we're gonna have to start paying attention to Oreo Slammer as she now sits at six penalties. One more and she will be removed from the game. That's right. It looks like the Potawatomi Casino Hotel penalty box is just filling up. Looks like Oreo Slammer, La Hapa, and Demanda beating all going to the penalty box. Buttercup getting through. Scoring four points for Fort Wayne, but not before Battle Stars are able to score three more points. So that will bring the score to 94 to 96. So what was first a one point game has now become a two point game. Good to see Amanda Wills back out on the track. She was the one that went down earlier on her rear end very painfully. So she is back in the game, so that's a good sign. Absolutely, it's always good to see people Skaters skating after they've taken a hard fall. Kelly Atkins now skating for Fort Wayne. Um, quickly hits out the other jammer. Merkel draws her back to around turn four. Merkel working her way. Kelly Atkins working on her way on the outside. Takes a spill after a big hit. Merkel though gets lead jam for the Battle Stars. Merkel looking for a space. On the inside, works, working her way against a two wall in the front. Kelly Atkins though, making her way around for her initial scoring pass. Merkel turning around, calling the jam off. That's a five point Rydell Skate Grand Slam for the Battle Stars and a lead change. Uh, that's right ladies and gentlemen, if you're sitting at home with a drink, drink up. Lead chain. Put that drink in the air like you just don't care. On jammer line now for the battle starts, we have number 85, Scully Wheeler, going against number B52, Dodger Elbows. Dodger Elbows trying to find some space on the outside, not finding any, getting knocked out. But finds some on the inside, gets lead jam for the SWAT teams. But Scully Wheeler's right behind her. The pack's keeping it fast. These jammers are racing, trying to get position, but 
Dodger Elbows is forced to call it off, playing it safe. You don't want to rush and just make it a race and tire yourselves out. So the score stands at 99 Battle Stars, 96 SWAT team. On the line now, skating for the Bruce City Battle Stars is a number 69 demand a beating going against number nine feline frenzy skating for the Fort Wayne SWAT team. Feline frenzy trying to find some room on the inside. Demand a beating doing so, but gets called on a track cut, making this a socket to me power jam for Fort Wayne. So big opportunity here for Fort Wayne to recapture that lead on this power jam. And now the Bruce City Battle Stars shedding blockers left and right. They're gonna have people queued up for the penalty box here now as poor old psychological out there on an island. Doing a lot of work there. There's not what you can do if you're just working by yourself. Now this is an unenviable situation to find yourself in. Folks are just heading to the penalty box, getting called on. Any kind of stuff now. Looks like mostly some destruction penalties. Um, it's kind of hard to understand where and how you should keep the pack if you've got <laughs> one or two people on the track for each team. It's like Oprah's out there handing out penalties. You get a penalty, you, <laughs> you get, get a, penalty. a penalty. Everybody gets a penalty. It's kind of a reverse Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best thing. <laughs> Feline Frenzy calls it off, gets two points for the SWAT team. And just like that, Fort Wayne with a 14 point lead again. Penalties will do that to you. Mm -hmm. The great equalizer. <laughs> An official timeout is being taken. Looks like officials are taking some time to sort out all the carnage headed <laughs> to the penalty box. We'll take some time to mention one of our sponsors, Rydell Skates who has sponsored um, Grand Slam right? I'll skate to unmatched quality, unmatched performance. They're also a vendor here at Brouhaha. We also want to mention Derby Laces, who is sponsoring the track tonight, this track right here. Bruce Skate Noose, the original over-the-shoulder roller skate holder. We have over 50 colors and patterns to fit your team, your league, or your personality. If that isn't enough, contact us for more customization options. If you spend a lot of money on those skates, don't shove them in a bag full of sweaty gear. Your skates hate that. That's Bruce Skate Nooses. And it looks like a penalty was added during that official review. Looks like number 8990, Frankie Fatale assessed another uh, destruction or out of play penalty. Yep. Two players on six, one of each team. Uh, that looks like Mother Trucker sitting at six for the Battle Stars, and Oreo Slammer also at six for the SWAT team. So they're in penalty danger. There's enough of this bout left that uh, we may see one of them foul out. Yep, still a lot of time on that clock, just under 17 minutes. And Kimber is jamming for the Battle Stars, gets lead jam, and it looks like number 17, Benton, is sent to the penalty box on a penalty, so this will be a socket to me, power jam. Kimber makes her way on the inside. Big hit to Wills. Makes her way through for a big grand slam. Kimber still making her way through. Challenging this three wall in the front of Fort Wayne. Gives a hit, gets around another grand slam for the Battle Stars. Benton is making her way back into the pack from the box. Kimber trying to duck through a hole, doesn't quite make it. Benton making her way, completing her initial pass. Kimber now calling it off. 
scoring a final four points for the Battle Stars. So that will bring us to a third, one, one, three, oh, 113 Nelly. tie game here. It's a whole new game, ladies and gentlemen. You take two drinks for a tie game. Oh, really? Well, I didn't and, know that. And then if you, you know, if there's an overtime jam, then you just, you finish, you know, whatever you're drinking. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm about just to write these rules down. I'm just making this up on the fly. I don't what? know if these are actually. What? This might be. I don't know. So Kelly Adkins is quickly your lead jammer for the Fort Wayne SWAT team. Meanwhile, the jammer Scully Wheeler for the Battle Stars being sent off for a track cut. So a power jam situation here for Kelly Adkins. Oh, so big jam, last jam for the Battle Stars, but the. Uh, Fort Wayne SWAT team, given an answer there, has an opportunity to come back. Looks like, and it looks like Oreo Slammer is on the way to the box four, what will be her seventh. Kelly Atkins making her way around, calls it off. Five more. Five more points for the SWAT team. So we will be saying farewell to Oreo Slammer as she did pick up her seventh penalty on that jam. So that's what the timeout will be about here for the officials as they get that straightened out and they will remove Oreo Slammer and replace her with the player that will be replacing her on the track when the penalty is over. We want to say a quick shout out to our sponsor, Socket To Me. Socket To Me sells fun, funky socks, socks with tacos, cupcakes, Ninjas, mustaches, unicorns, and all other things magical. With over 200 sock, different sock designs, there is something for every personality from punk rock to peacock and everything in between. Sockatumi socks. I mean, I know tacos are really tasty and delicious, but when did they become magical? I must have missed that memo. I mean, tacos are pretty magical. Like, I mean, tacos. Don't get me wrong, they're excellent Come food. Come on, tacos, Hammer. But... I'm not, I, I must have missed the memo on when they became magical. I said, I, you know, come to Madison. I'll, I'll take you to a few places where they're really magical. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would not have thought that Madison would be the place to go get magical tacos. It's but that's not, okay. but it's, you know, you have to, you have to do what you know. I do like Madison though. So any excuse to come to Madison. <laughs> it's not the ideal taco <laughs> home. <laughs> no? No, no. B-52, Dodger Elbows, gets out for Fort Wayne. She's your lead jammer. 85, Scully Wheeler out there jamming for the Battle Stars. Looks like B-52 calls it. Four points for the SWAT team. So nope. in no points for the Battle Stars. So in Oreo Slammer's place, they put in Mindy to Butcher Knife. She was re-entering play as that jam came to an end. So full strength here for Fort Wayne. It looks like only three blockers on the track as Psychological sits in the penalty box for the Battle Stars. And it'll be number 55, Merkel, out there for the Battle Stars, going up against number nine, Feline Frenzy for Fort Wayne. Merkel trying to drive up the line. Feline Frenzy getting recycled back. Ooh, big Ooh. hit by Buttercup. It looks like Merkel has been awarded lead jam, but she is still stuck in the pack, but gets out. Feline Frenzy trying to find some space, cuts on in the inside. About a fourth of the track behind Merkel. Packs going at a rather rapid pace. Forcing these jammers to speed up to catch up. Merkill trying to take a quick whip and gains a quick one point, but matched by one point from Fort Wayne. So trading ones here on this jam. Fourteen points separating these two squads right now. The score one twenty-eight Fort Wayne. Sorry, thirteen points. Battle Stars 15. Benton on the line for Fort Wayne, going up against Scully Wheeler for the Battle Stars. It looks like huh. 
there is, oh, a potential official timeout, but JK, not an actual timeout. So Amanda Wills with the uh, illegal procedure call as she had forgot to put her mouth guard in. It was actually sticking up out of her helmet. The referee saw that and sent her off. Proper gear of the utmost concern to our ref staff. You can take out your mouth guard when you are sitting in the box, but you have to put it in when you start skating again. Yep, yep, yep. Looks like a, some quick points put on the board um, by the Battle Stars. It's going to be Kelly Adkins now jamming for the SWAT team going up against number 32, Schoolhouse Rock for the Battle Stars. A little jammer on jammer as Kelly Adkins trying to keep Schoolhouse Rock out, but a little help from her friends uh, gets her out. But Kelly Adkins takes lead jam in any case, makes her way around. Schoolhouse Rock still stuck in the pack, gets recycled. By, the uh, by Fort Wayne. Kelly Atkins comes on the outside, is able to score a five point. Rydell skates grand slam for the SWAT team. Schoolhouse Rock getting hit by Buttercup. Coming up against a strong defense of Buttercup, Brontosaurus, Amanda Wills, and Feline Frenzy.